Okay. It. What's up, y'all? It's your girl Chanel from Complex Simplicity. I hope you're enjoying your evening. Um, I wanted to do a quick little. Let me turn this down. Sorry. I wanted to do a quick little vlog. Um, kind of piggybacking off of my Facebook video post where I discussed certain things that you can get to know me more by. That always seems to get people's attention. Um, and so, I know you're probably like, yo, she's like done up more than usual, which is true. <laughs> um, I just came back from celebrating one of my good girlfriend's birthdays. So we had like a girl's night out. I just finished blogging about my full outfit and what I wore tonight. I kind of wanted to go for like a, a edgy moment. Um, I do like to have edgy outfits on every now and then. And I'm um, always in love with the red lip and wearing Ruby Woo. But anyway, um, we had a good time and I was able to make it back home in time to do some vlogging and blogging just for you. <laughs> I know um, some of you may wonder why I don't always have myself done up, you know, when I'm doing these um, vlogs, but a big part of my website is embracing your flaws and being vulnerable. And so for me, it's important that I'm not always like on, so to speak, or like face beat, you know, dressed in my finest threads. You know, sometimes I like to be now, I guess be deglamorized. Sometimes I like to just be me, you know what I'm saying? How I look on my day to day when I'm walking around in my house, you know, um, some days you may catch me after work with my makeup smudged, but I like to embrace all those kind of flaws. Don't get me wrong. You know, you'll see more, um, vlogs of me looking how I do when I leave the house, but you're still going to always probably get a lot of vlogs where I'm just me, you know, underneath all the layers of the good makeup and hairstyle and outfits, just me in a regular camisole or a t-shirt, the stuff I wear around the house, you know, my face not really done up. Um, that's important to me to really show that there's strength and vulnerability, there's beauty um, as well, and just being in your natural state. Um, so to get to the questions of getting to know me more, the deep questions. <laughs> um, okay, number 16, you know, I jump around a lot. What kind of parent do you think you will be? To be honest with you, I would like to think that I would be kind of how my parents were with me. They were very laid back. There was structure in the home. There was love and nurturance in the home. There was a necessary amount of attention given to my brother and I. Um, but at the same time, my parents, when I was growing up and when I was an adolescent, teenager, even when I was in college, my parents weren't like on me so strict, you know, they gave me age appropriate freedom. And I think that that worked out because by the time I went to college, I wasn't wilding out and, you know, because you get all this freedom, you know, acting wild and like being real loose and coming home with babies and stuff like that. So one thing I definitely want to take from my parents, aside from the structure, love, and nurturance, of course, because I, can't, I grew up in a Christian family, so um, there were definitely was structure and certain rules of the home. However, a lot of my other friends from church, they really didn't have a lot of freedom sometimes, and my parents always gave me age-appropriate freedom. They understood that it was important for me to have a social life, and they took the time to kind of see my friends and meet their parents and, you know, know who I was around. Um but they also, you know, gave me the freedom that was necessary. So I would like to think and hope that I would be that kind of a parent where I give age appropriate freedom, allow my child to develop into who they are, um, allow them to express themselves, you know, um, even if it means they're putting on a crazy punky Brewster outfit, which I love, by the way, <laughs> you know, I want to be that kind of parent where there's enough love in the home, enough attention given, enough nurturance, a healthy balance. I want to be a balanced parent. Maybe that's the best way to answer this question. I would like to be a balanced parent. Um, it was very important to me to make sure that I didn't allow myself to get pregnant until I was married. Um, and that my child grow up with having a father in the home as well as me as their mom, because that's how I grew up. My parents were married when I came along and I grew up having a dad in the home, a father in the home, and I grew up having a mother in the home. I believe that that is the true perspective that God wanted and, um, and ordained to be, so to speak. And I always, my perspective always is I, I had a great childhood and I want to be able to give that to my children and more. And so, um, that's why I was very cautious and careful with my choices. I'm not, 
I don't have any ch children yet. Um, you know, I'm hoping to have a child at some point and or children at some point. And I want to be able to be a balanced parent, a loving, nurturing, structured parent. Um, pretty much. No, that's a long answer, but yeah. Okay, number 34. I also want my children to be able to talk to me about anything. That's another thing that I love about my parents. I feel like I can really talk to them about pretty much anything. Um, number 34. What are your thoughts on online dating? In the beginning, I'll be honest, a couple of years ago when it wasn't as popular, I always, I think, I was concerned when I would have friends or family who would date online just to make sure that they didn't, you know, meet an ex murderer or someone who could put their safety in jeopardy. But I must say within the past year or two, I've seen and heard a lot of success stories um, with finding love on the internet. We definitely are in a day and age where technology is everything and, um, you know, it allows you to be able to meet people who you wouldn't run into or bump into in your city, in your town, in your state, you know. Um, and so I definitely have a different outlook about online dating. And, you know, in some crazy ways, especially if the person lives in another state or far from you, it may allow you to be able to really get to know the person before getting physical. I always feel like when you're in relationships that get physical too fast, um, it, it, it can potentially do something to the relationship. Um, I think when you're able to spend time talking and getting to know someone over a span of time and being forced to not have the option or it be that easy to just go and run and sleep with the person, um, I feel that you really get to know who they are, their soul, their being, their wants, their aspirations, their lives, their challenges, their struggles, their strengths, their accomplishments um, without sex getting in the mix. And I definitely understand why God says sex is what I give for people who are married. Like I, the purpose of sex is a beautiful thing, making love, but under the auspices of marriage, I definitely understand, you know, why God made it that way, you know, um, because sex can definitely be a distraction in relationships, especially when it happens very soon. Um, that's kind of a special bond that is supposed to be for like a a forever relationship, you know, but that's just my perspective. But I have an open mind to online dating. So when I have my friends and my family members talk about, I met this person online and we've been talking and things are going really good. I don't judge it anymore. I'm like, okay, you know, just get to know the person, take your time, things of that nature. Um, last question, number 33. What did your past relationship teach you? I'll be honest. Um, I haven't been in a lot of relationships. Um, aside from my husband, I would say when I was very young in high school, I had like a puppy love relationship that lasted all of my high school years, which is four years into a lot of my college years, to be honest with you. Um, there was this young man that I was very much so into and I liked, heavy, heavily liked. <laughs> it wasn't like full on in love, but even though I thought it was at the time. And so... Um, I think, you know, he was one of those guys, life at a party, very fun to be around. Um, of course, we were friends first before anything kind of started with us. But what I will say that I learned is that um, from that relationship, because, you know, he kind of broke my little heart a few times, a few times too many. <laughs> um, what I would say is I learned that, you know, when you're dating that young, nothing is etched in stone. Um, when I say he broke my heart, like by cheating and, you know, flirting with my friends, like I felt like I couldn't trust him. And I think that that really started to teach me the importance of being able to trust who you're with and, um, the importance of when you're done, be done, you know, because I was young, it was, it was an off and on relationship for several years and, um, I think the crazy thing is like by the time I graduated college and came back, you know, I lived in a small town, so we, our paths would cross. Um, and of course, you know, when someone first takes your heart in a puppy love kind of way, those feelings are still always there. And so when I would see him, I would always have like a soft spot in my heart for him. Um, and I think that he started to realize like, dad, you know, Chanel was actually a good catch. Like I kind of missed out on something great. Um, but at the same time, I learned that you don't look back for a reason, you know, um, and that 
even though he was the life of the party, he was so much fun to be around. I used to love, enjoy spending time with him, even just kicking it as friends, that this was someone who potentially I just would never be able to trust, you know, for whatever reasons. I think some of us just struggle with being faithful and being appropriate in relationships. And I'm hoping that that's not the case with him now, but I know growing up, especially in my teenage years, that was, that was a difficult time. I got my heart broken, but it taught me how to be strong. It definitely taught me my worth because I always knew, and that was the crazy part, regardless of what girl he got with and would break up with me for, or this, that, and the third, or, um, he always, he, I think that he always knew like I was what, what it was. Like I was a great catch, um, but he just wasn't ready. And we were young. And what I knew was the fact that there wasn't anything wrong with me per se as to why he was doing these things. It was more whatever was going on with him, you know? And I'm glad that I was able to differentiate that and identify that from young. And I, I carried that up until now, of course, you know, in college, there were guys that I liked, you know, and, um, I could tell when they were into me, but not to the point of really wanting to like pursue and date me. And, you know, I feel like guys always know when someone is like serious, like, nah, I can't mess with her in that way because she wants like more than just someone who wants a good time and who's naive and willing to just let you treat them any kind of way. And so, um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I get my heart kind of broken a little bit even in college years, but at the end of the day, I always knew whoever's meant to be with me, they're gonna pursue me and only me. And they're gonna pursue me full throttle and be like, yo, she is it, she's who I want, that girl is dope. It's not gonna be like, yeah, she's cool, she's cute, but she's cool, she's sexy, she's bomb, she's this, you know, meeting other girls in the mix with me. Like I knew that whoever God really had for me and who I was supposed to be with was gonna be like, yo, Chanel, that's it. Like, she's dope. I want her. Done deal. And I'm not saying in a way where they were going to marry me right away, but just in a way where they at least knew exclusively they wanted to date me. And that's kind of what I found in my husband. He pursued me like a, to me, like a grown man that's supposed to pursue a woman. And, you know, and I was in my early 20s during this time, but he full on pursued me. He had his pick of the litter. Sorry, my bun's doing some craziness. He had his pick of the litter. He had his pick of women, you know, at the job and just in life in general. But whatever it was that he saw and liked in me, I, I will always respect the fact that he full on pursued me. Like, to me, that's dope. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I would encourage all of you out there. I know a lot of people right now going through relationship issues, marital issues, all kinds of things, you know. But just never forget your worth. Um, me and my girlfriend whose birthday we was talking about that even tonight like don't forget your worth you know regardless of what you're going through try not to let it hold you down hold you back from life from you know enjoying the positive aspects of your life like if you're dealing with someone or you're married to someone who's not doing right by you not treating you well you know of course cry mourn it mourn that relationship that moment whatever you're going through go to god about it i get that but at the end of the day if this person is still continuously showing you by their behavior that they don't appreciate who you are, what you bring to the table, they don't love you enough, listen here. Know your worth. That's pretty much what I'm saying. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what you need to do as far as how to get out of the situations or whatever. But what I will say is know your worth. I know um, a lot of people going through some heavy stuff right now in relationships. So like I said, my encouragement and empowering words to you is to, to really know and love yourself. Know your worth. Know that you are worth everything and more. And that the way God the Father looks at you and views you and loves you and understands your worth, that whoever you are going to be with in that way, they should too. And of course, it's not going to be to the level of God, you know, because God is God. But at the end of the day, I say, you got you to gotta love and know your worth. Love you enough, love you more even. You know what I'm saying? I was big on that um, phrase. I love you, but I love me just a little bit more. You, you got to know that you are worth everything, okay? So please be encouraged. I know this started off with me just giving you more tidbits into me and who I am in my life. But listen, if I could drop some lines of encouragement while I'm at it, I'm with it, you know? So thanks again for the love, everyone. Continue to head to the site, complexsimplicity.weebly.com. My vacation is officially over today. I need to act like I know and get ready for work <laughs> in the morning. Okay, y'all. Take care. Take care.
Take care. <laughs>